go ahead and show it. Stand up, fight back, no time for hoping. Recognize we got that power. Good morning, good morning. You're now tuned in to the eLife Power Lunch. I am your co-host, Chris Murray, and I'm here with Dr. Baruch. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself, Chris? I am wonderful. It's slightly warmer than it has been, so I'm feeling great. Yes, yes, it is a good day. As a matter of fact, I think it's supposed to be in the 60s tomorrow, which makes me even happier. I mean, I'm sure my body and everything else will be confused, but my mind and my spirit will be happy because I love warm weather in fact you know i had a question like it it just seems weird that we start the new year like in the middle of winter it seems like it would be more natural to start it like in the spring when all the flowers and everything the birds are chirping that type of thing it just seems kind of weird but well it's funny you should bring that up because that's exactly what i do i do not Mm -hmm. believe that the year begins in the in what i call the dead of winter okay you know because there's nothing that happens from December 31st to January 1st in nature. Mm -hmm. Nothing. However, come the end of, what is it, April, transitioning into March. I'm sorry. You know, I'm working on this. I'm just trying (laughs) to do so much. But anyway, that uh, as as you're transitioning, you get a chance to see that transition. You see the birds, the bees, the buds on the trees. Right. You know, all this new stuff. And, you know, you get get a lot of babies born, like, in December time frame because all this spring energy is coming about. And, yeah. The evidence comes around around that time, huh? Yeah. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, we have a ton of hot topics to jump into today. Um, I cannot go without mentioning uh, President Obama's farewell speech that happened last night at 9 p.m. Not sure if you guys had a chance to check that out. But um, it's just interesting, again, on social media, just seeing all the responses. Most of my timeline was flooded with love and tears that uh, the family's like officially leaving. Like we've been kind of emotionally preparing ourselves for it for, you know, months now, but we're down to the last few days. And so I saw a ton of um, posts uh, just in regard to that. Were you able to check it out? I actually did. I needed a couple more seconds. But yes, I actually yeah. did check that out. It's um, I saw the whole thing. Okay. I, it was on at my restaurant over in uh, Northwest D.C. So I did get to check it out. As a matter of fact, I have it here. I'm going to pull it up, at least a, a part of it that I think was really memorable. And it's when he, he brings attention to his wife. Um, yeah. He brings attention <laughs> to his wife. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch the audio. Okay. Of him talking to and talking about his beautiful wife. Let's check that out. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna learn how to do all of this as an engineer and a production person. So we're gonna go here. Am I right? Am I am I doing this right? You all don't mind. When all us folks go back there. to the graphic, go back to the graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Another interesting yeah. point. I'll I'll just keep going if you guys well, don't mind. Let's, I got it. I got it. Okay. Can't believe we pulled this whole thing off. Let me tell you, you're not the only ones. Michelle. Just a little teary on my day. <laughs> Michelle LaVon Robinson, girl of the South Side. Mm-hmm. For, the fa- for the past 25 years, you have not only been my wife and mother of my children, you have been my best friend. You took on a role you didn't ask for, and you made it your own, with grace and with grit and with style and good humor. Of course, it would be a lot better if we saw the image. I'm making on that. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is how we do it. Okay, let's see. You made the White House a place that belongs to everybody. And a new generation sets its sights higher because it has you as a role model. So you have made me proud, and you have made the country proud. Malia and Sasha, under the strangest of circumstances, you have become two amazing young women. You are smart and you are beautiful, but more importantly, you are kind and you are thoughtful and you are full of passion. And you wore the burden of years in the spotlight so easily. Of all that I have done in my life, I am most proud to be your dad. All right. Um, yeah, that was uh, Barack Obama talking about Michelle from the South Side. That was funny. And indeed, a memorable speech as we watched Obama presumably say goodbye. Except today, when we look at the news, we see that main man Trump seems to have gotten himself into a little bit of trouble. And the trouble that he's gotten himself into seems to be pretty heavy to the extent that you hear people saying, well, wait a minute, this man can't be president. He can, if he did all of this, he can't, how are we going to allow this guy to be the president who's seemingly in bed with Russia, one of our arch, our, one of America's arch enemies? You know, so uh, I hear it being sorted out. And um, I would just like to say about the Obama, you know, speech, he's, he's such a great orator and has um, brought a lot of positive energy in his ability to communicate. He's brought a lot of positive energy to young African-American hopefuls who desire to one day maybe take a leadership position that they know one of the things that they need to do is learn how to speak. They need to maintain their swagger but not be, you know, like hood. And... Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a beautiful wife next to you with two beautiful children to support this vision and, and give you reason to continue on this road as you look up and you say, you know what, I'm doing this for Sasha and Malia. So uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, phenomenal speech that he gave last night. And um, we are actually doing some technical work right now as I speak to see what we can do about bringing that image to you so that you can see the video clip that we've been looking at. But uh, it may not work, as, uh, as we're trying to do a whole lot in here all of a sudden. But that's the way Chris and Baruch get it done. We just say, hey, can we do that? Yeah, let's try it. And all of a sudden, we are working on something new. But um, this as you all know, is the eLife Power Lunch. And um, we are excited always about bringing to you information that uh, you might not get elsewhere, or if you do get it elsewhere, you'll get it from a different perspective here. And I would just like to continue uh, a little bit more on the Obama, uh, President Barack Obama farewell speech that um, he was, um, he was very effective at communicating not only a farewell speech, but also communicating a 
we're looking at you, Mr. Trump, without saying his name, without mentioning his name, not even once, but he made mention of things that he knows is the Trump policy mm -hmm. and has already become his way of doing business after having been selected, elected, or whatever to be the next president of the United States. So he already put some things into the hearing. And just as we know, the Republican Party has been working for the last eight years to get a Republican, not only president, but they got a Republican Senate, Republican Congress, you know, House. They've got Republican governors. They, they swept everything. And I think the Democrats are now looking up and realizing, uh-oh, we went to sleep. Mm. So it was, uh, it was indeed a good speech. But um, you, uh, you, of course, you can catch the whole thing out on the Internet today. That's right. And I, I mean, my question is, you know, what are we going to be doing as a people? Mm -hmm. You know, that's really all that matters. It's not about bringing back up who voted and who didn't vote. I mean, I saw a lot of that in my timeline yesterday, which I just thought was just unnecessary because it really, at this point, it really, really doesn't matter right. <laughs> um, whether the votes matter back then. This is what's happening. It's, it's a reality. And uh, we have just a few days to figure out how we're going to play it. And um, I think keeping our eyes open is definitely one of those things that we have to seriously do because it's going to just be such a, a difference in what we've been experiencing. And so just keeping our eyes open will be a way to, you know, stay, stay afloat, you know. And I'm sure there's political strategists and other people in the community who, who may be uh, more informed about what's going on. I think this is going to be the time where we're going to have to lean on those people. And, um, you know, also, as I always say, research. This is time to open up that book, you know, get on um, whatever research platform that you use and learn for yourself because that's the only way you can really uh, prevent being... Um, take it taken advantage of to the point where you just have absolutely no no clue what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we're we're seeing that, we're seeing that, and uh, and and like you said, hopefully th this is the response that people uh, offer that they they decide that okay, it's time for us to take action. It's like yeah. like in the speech last night, he said, okay, get up, get out, do the work, vote. And, and also do the work, mm -hmm. you know, because there's work that has to be done. Obviously, in the United States of America, if you believe that the voter turnout was accurate and what, what was counted was indeed what was displayed on the TV screens all across America, then you know that there's a whole lot of people who uh, wanted not only Obama, but everything to do with the Democratic Party gone. Mm -hmm. They're done. They're ready for, like, as, as was this campaign speech, they're ready for, you know, to make America whatever again, <laughs> you know, however that works. But right. it's, um, yeah, it was, it, was really, it was really interesting to see. And it's interesting to see today, I don't know whether you picked up, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, did you hear about Mr. Trump? And the dirt that he's gotten himself into yet again. Yeah, it's not it's not really looking good for the start. I mean, if this he's literally not not even officially in yet, and this is what we're preparing for. It, yeah. it, I don't even know what to say. You know, it's like who else is waiting? It seems like this was timed. Yeah. You know, it, it was strategic. Okay, let's drop this now. So we have a few more days until the twentieth. You know, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen the next day? And once again, this is the pre week it's not even the first week so yeah and this is a guy you know i don't know how many other presidents not that america has this uh crystal uh i mean this uh pristine image right you know many people think america's pretty dirty but to think that he has been brought up on charges of i think pedophilia or rape i didn't hear that yeah, that was that was a long, a good while ago that there was a case against him for for in, uh, seemingly engaging a minor, or if nothing if nothing else, it was a rape a rape charge against him where he settled out of court, and then of course he had relations with some guy that was known for uh, pedophilia, and uh, having parties at his house with youngsters at his house, and and the Don talks highly of him.
Mm. You know, so when you start putting all these pieces together, you you, you then got to look at the the first lady elect. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, none of us have probably seen a naked image of our first lady, but now we will. We will we will have that floating around on the Internet. And uh, I'm sure enough copies have been made that they won't be able to get them all down off the net. So it's it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. But that that just takes me back. What do what are we doing? Because you know, all of that given, we can't change anything at this point. We can't do anything, I guess, unless someone has enough information to get them out of there. So even in that, it puts our country in sort of a, a possibly chaotic state because then we're pretty much back to the drawing board. Um, but as a community, what what steps can we take? I mean, I think. We're, we're off to a good start and having meetings coming down where we have a place for people to come and talk. I think mm-hmm. that's, you know, a key thing because otherwise it's like we're sitting here, well, what do we do? Where do we go? Da, da, da. Well, so you guys know you have that place. Come down here um, to our weekly um, seminar. It's um, Tuesday, Wednesdays, 7 p.m., um, which is tonight. So come out and join us. Come grab a bite to eat before that. But I bring it up not for that purpose, but just to say if you have questions, if you need somebody to talk to, come out because we're going to be here. And um, I know we have a presentation tonight, but sometimes current events can kind of, you know, sway those things if necessary because we, we, got, we have to talk about it. We have to figure it out. So, yeah, yeah. And figuring it out is uh, it, it's not going to happen in one meeting. But definitely there needs to be uh, some some comings together. We need that think tank. You know, where we can begin to sit down and articulate what needs to be done in order to change, you know, our circumstance. Because I don't think any of us are are ranting and raving about how uh, well off we are as a result of, you know, the last eight years under Obama. I don't think there's anybody screaming and hollering about how their circumstance has gotten so much better. Mm -hmm. So we, we also have to conclude that whoever's in that house doesn't change the fact that okay you still have to take care of yourself you still have to be responsible you still have to you know realize the importance of family and building a family and supporting a family and raising children and raising children to not get caught in the snare of the judicial or the criminal justice or injustice system you know all of those things um, don't necessarily uh, are not directly impacted by who's in the White House you know Mm -hmm. that's up to us so I think, just like you said, there's work that we have to do. Mm-hmm. We have to roll up our sleeves and, and be prepared to engage a process. And uh, and I think that process is just basic, just human existence. You know, take care of yourself, take care of yours, you know, and do what you can to increase your your resources so that you can do more for more people at the end of the day. Right. That's right. And I put up this article because this was going to be my question. Why haven't I heard about it? And this specific article in the Huffington Post addresses it. And this is um, fairly recent. It's from November of 2016. And I'll just sum it up and get to the two points they are given um, for us not or not the media not being um, not covering it. Um, The first reason is that the accuser is anonymous. And um, according to this article, um, this is something that happened in 1994. Um, the the girl was 13 years old. And um, the second reason is because the accuser's public backers have been savaged in the press. So basically, uh, I guess they're catching all kinds of everything um, for even coming uh, public with it. And so that's the reason it hasn't been covered. But again, that just makes me question our whole process. Like, how can, like, this is just one additional thing which is worse than all the other things how do we how do we get this far if people have these things attached to their name they wouldn't be able to be you know a principal of a school let alone the president of the united states like how do we how do we even get this far right if 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 obama if barack obama's record was just one one tenth maybe maybe <laughs> one one hundredth well we all know bad. why yeah, yeah we all know why <laughs> he, he, he had to be blemish free yeah completely and of course trump and others tried to find blemishes mm-hmm. you know in order to justify not voting and you know here it is eight years later and it's like okay so that means everything that you had to say was false and yet still people wanted to put you in the white house right you know with your crack research crew 
that gave you all your intelligentsia, it was all wrong. Right, right. And, like, you know, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not vouching for and standing up and beating my chest for Obama. I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think we even know who he is. I think we know he, he represents a corporate entity called the United States of America. Right. And uh, he is doing that which is in the best interest of co the corporate entity you know, entity. And we also have to know no matter when he speaks, unless he's speaking right off the cuff, he has been given a speech. And he has speechwriters that give him what to say. And that not that's not just qualified through the individuals that are writing the speech, but the individuals that need to make sure that he stays within the boundaries that they've set for him. Right. So it's uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a hocus pocus circus act. And the next one is the clown, Mr. Trump. <laughs> so oh, we'll see. Here we go. Here we go. Well, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Let's let's come together. You know, we've got Wednesday nights here, mm -hmm. and there are places all over the city, I'm sure. But we need to start coming together and working together and supporting one another and and sharing our vision and 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 buying black. I've, I've got some. Images. I don't know that they'll come up. Let me see whether I can get these. Images. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, just just speaking of working together, uh, I came across this image online um, early this morning on Instagram, and I liked it because it kind of goes in line with what we were talking about yesterday in setting some goals that we can look forward to. And I said on a monthly basis, but this is this breaks it down even further to a weekly um, basis where we can. Um, set a goal and come together and do that. And I think that's something that will be extremely effective. And I think we should incorporate that into um, what we're doing. What I'll do is reach out to the originator um, of this image and maybe we can do something because there are a lot of accounts that I noticed this morning and I started following a bunch of them that had shared this image. Now just imagine if all of these accounts and I specifically looked at them for that reason. They have, you know, a hundred thousand followers, you know, twenty thousand followers at minimum. Some even have more than that. Um, if we can kind of share the same type of images and everything else that we do, we would be really, you know, getting the word out there and just supporting these just images with again, not to keep promoting what we're doing, but you always have to have a physical place. Otherwise, it's just uh, sharing a hashtag. We're not doing anything. The action happens when we come together in person. And we can do that. For instance, they have Wellness Wednesdays. And we can, you know, be the sponsor of the Wellness Wednesdays. We can get up here and, you know, give tips. Whatever we need to do, make one-minute video so that everybody can share. That's something that will move it forward. Um, what's the Monday? Let me, let me open it up here so I can see it. Um, uh, Mastery Mondays and so Mastery Mondays is according to them basically when you spend at least two hours studying something to enrich your life or your family or your business or your career um, teach Tuesday is when you take and take the opportunity to teach someone else um, something and let me get to what they actually because I'm paraphrasing here um, what? teach it Tuesdays is what they were calling it um, and when you teach someone close something dope. Okay, I like the way they made it rhyme so it's a little more marketable. Um, Wellness Wednesday, they're focusing on physical wellness by meditating and exercise, but we can add a whole ton to that with Dr. Black. I'm saying we, like the way I say we, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Tactical Thursday, we uh, dedicate this day to enhancing our strategy and survival skills by Black Fridays. We support our economic structure by funneling our resources into Black economic solutions and businesses. Uh, Spiritual Saturdays to take the time to get out to know ourselves, our history, our gods, and each other to form a more perfect union. And Supper Sundays where we eat together. Hey, we have a place for that too. Yeah. Eat together, um, whether it's a home cooked meal, and we have to help our English uh, here. But anyway, uh, whether a home cooked meal or your local black eatery. Um, this is the day we break bread and talk to each other. And that's cool, too, because we also talked about that having um, family Sunday themed here where we can come out. Um, because I love when I bring my whole family here and there are other families here and the kids just start playing with each other. And they're always asking me, here we go to the vegan restaurant. We want to talk to Dr. Baruch. <laughs> and my daughter, I think she even came up to you. So she had an idea she's been bugging me about. And I said, well, when we go back, you have to ask him. She wanted to um, suggest adding vegan tacos to the menu. <laughs> you know what she said? Because she, she asked me whether we had them. Oh. And I, I should have 
I should have understood that differently because <laughs> I do know that you're working with her as a young entrepreneur. Yes. And she was making the suggestion, hey, mister, you need to get some <laughs> vegan tacos up in there. You need the recipe? <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. They get so excited when they come down here. And I know, you know, for those of our, our viewers and listeners who do live in the area and come down, there's a certain energy that you get here. And I'm just, you know, particularly impressed that my kids, you know, it trickles down to them because they get so excited and Dr. Rue, I know you notice because they get extremely excited they're on the stage they're everywhere but you know I try to keep them you know contained but at the same time I'm just so happy that they're excited about something positive yeah you know like I said on the previous show they make sure I stay in line because I'm working on bringing them over and I hope hopefully we can do a show about that too just kind of what um, a vegan diet looks like for kids they're three and six and so I'm sure there are certain things that we have to be careful because they're in a you know key development mm -hmm. stage and so that's my fear just be, being a new vegan and me kind of you know even myself I'm sure I don't eat properly I know what I'm avoiding but I know that I'm not necessarily putting all the nutrients and things in my body that I need so that's another idea that I had you know I wake up at four in the morning most days and um, when I can pull myself to do it and I need to be better about it but I get up and I start writing my visions and my ideas and stuff and so one of the ideas maybe we can implement a program for new vegans because it's like I know that it's the right thing to do but you know I can't <laughs> I'm better off this year guys but this year I'm not on potatoes only so I've, I've stepped it up a bit but if we had a um, uh, a class and we can even work that into our Wednesday just uh, for people to be able to come out and just get the information they need just so that they're doing the right thing because we don't want to make ourselves worse off and trying to get better and that's a risk you know I know that I have some level of anemia and so I know you've given me some advice about that so for me to just have some literature or to you know have some resources that I can make sure that I'm doing what I need to do so so again that I'm, I'm healthier you know I don't want to be worse off just because I'm avoiding certain foods I definitely want to be better off sure sure no I, I get it and and I think that's what we're, we're definitely here to do and here to support and I I can answer I can give you an answer for just about everything in the sense that we understand that the health challenges that we suffer from it's really not you know they they've decided to call it these names so they've got all these little names you got cancer you got diabetes you mm -hmm. got high blood pressure and it's really diseases of Toxicity, diseases of, of uh, nutritional deficiency, diseases of lack of nutrition, uh, dehydration, mm -hmm. and there are probably about two or three other categories, but that's it. And everything fits into those categories. So everything that, you know, that fits into those categories, ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to provide the appropriate support right. in order to, you know, get recovery or to maintain wellness. And Every single day, I eat enough vitamins to probably, you know, it, it would amaze you how many vitamins I'm taking in on a daily basis. But uh, I do it because I, I've seen people die from cancer. Mm -hmm. I've seen people get amputated in limbs from diabetes. I've seen, you know, folks have heart events as a result of uh, heart failure. I've seen you know, cholesterol challenges. I've seen, you know, the list goes on. I, I know what arthritis feels like personally. So I am, I eat, I eat on a daily basis and I, and I supplement on a daily basis to support me not encountering those problems. Right. And, uh, and that's what I teach. I teach people, let's, let's be preventive. Let's not wait till we get it and then try to overcome it because that, that's a long road. It's right. a much longer road than preventing it. Right. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's something that we'll be doing more of and we'll be extending to you, the viewing and listening audience, so that you get an opportunity to learn from other people's knowledge and learn from other people's mistakes and successes. That's yeah. right. And I think, you know, another thing, it's about breaking habits. And so um, just going back to this um this week, and I don't know if there's a specific title they've given it, but um, oh, Black Indie Challenge. I'm sorry, it is called the Black Indie Challenge. If we do things like this, then I think again that gives us that opportunity to do it. But um, even launching our own initiatives in, um, I was thinking of maybe February, we can kind of call everyone to action to um, get rid of junk food. You know, just start start there. We got to start somewhere. So maybe we can start. I feel like that might be the easiest thing because we know it's bad, but it's so good. Okay, start with the chip and the sodas and that type of thing. Um, just doing that as a first step. And um, I know in our culture anyway, there's um, chicken is a big thing. And we, we had a conversation the other day about that. It's just some things that we are just so attached to, but 
And we can take stepping stones to just getting to the point where, you know, we can just add on and add on this month is the, the junk food. Next month, it could be processed food, you know, just keep going gradually until we get to the point and we do it together. You know, that way we have support. Um, we have accountability. We have um, options, too, because if we know we're all going down to everlasting on, on Thursday, then uh, I can, you know, break myself away from heading down to, to Popeye's and take advantage of whatever special they have. Um, or do you have a name for Popeye's? Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet, but I, I do have what? Crack Donalds and yes. Murder King and yes. Taco Hell and yes. Lynn Disease and yes. Chokers, Bow Strangles, the International House of Pulmonary Heart Disease, <laughs> Pizza Slut. You know, a couple of things, you know, we've just come up with just to help us recognize that it's really not food. Right, right. It's not what's going on in there. What's going on there is manipulating your biology so that you can become drug dependent or just die. Right. So yeah, I um I'm I'm on board and uh, and we will be offering more of that. Right. It, uh, we we did have a guest who was not able to make it, and that seems to be a common theme. Maybe it's like the New Year's resolution. I'm gonna break appointments. I'm just not gonna show up. So we did have a guest who didn't show up today, but uh, we will be sure to fill up the calendar. Let's let's just double book. Yeah. Why don't we double book? That yeah, way, yeah. you know, oh, there's two of y'all. Okay, well, that's okay. You all right. share the time. That's right. We'll have a chances panel. Are, mm -hmm, right. Because right. chances are would only been, it would have been none of them if we only invited one of them. Right. And that's no fun. Because right. then Chris and I got to sit here and talk to each other. Right, but I, that's cool. Because, look, I was online, you know, in my spare time. I spent a lot of time re so researching. <laughs> I am. I love it. I'm so excited. Look, this is the first time I said excited. I have to break myself from saying that. But, you know, you, you brought it out. So I have to I had to say it at that point. But um, I was online, and I came across this guy. And he just seemed really familiar. But anyway, he was giving some good po points. And I'll send you the video if you want to cue it. Mm -hmm. Um. And we're, are we able to you're giving, you're giving me some other uh, more work stuff, yeah more we look we got we got a whole other 30 minutes to go look let's let's get it um he has some really good points and that's the reason that i brought up the chicken because it's like you know we really don't want to know the truth about things and um i don't know i just like the points that he was given i hadn't seen this video before and it just it seemed you know really familiar i don't know you may know him um or have heard of him but anyway, um, I just thought that it was something that kind of opened my eyes. Like, I'm, you know, I'm already vegan, so, but it, it, it was kind of painful for me to hear what I was eating, you know, and the fact that, like I said, I'm transitioning my family um, to the, the vegan lifestyle. And now it's like, I, I need to really, you know, do some research because my, my fear and it's because of lack of education, and so I'm glad I'm here. I'm in the right place. But I have a fear of giving my son soy because I feel like that has not Maybe we can touch on that at, at some point. Um, just because of the, you know, the the basic research that I've done to just kind of figure out what we can eat. Um, he's three years old, so I, you know, I don't want him to be altered. At, you know, me again in trying to do a good thing, I mess up because I don't have all the right information. So that, and then my daughter as well. She's six years old, and so I don't want her walking around, you know, looking like she's sixteen right now so those are my concerns and that's sort of been my hesitation um in you know just jumping ship with you know for everybody yeah well you know most of the estrogens and and you should be mindful across the board not only in what you're eating mm -hmm. but now we're seeing and we we got a chance to get a good dose of it when uh uh, Chris Dun Curtis Duncan was on. Right. That, you know, we love the smell of the Glade or the whatever, the Lysol inside the plugins. Mm -hmm. You know, we love the smell, but those are endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. And the endocrine disruptors are not only in those scented, you know, plugins, but just the, the scented sprays, the scented uh, laundry detergent, the the scented soap, the scented paper towels, the scented everything. toilet papers, the scented, oh my goodness. yeah, the, the, the little trees you put in your car, you know, all of these carry these, this endocrine disruptor. You know, when you go into your bathroom in a public space, and I, you know, I admit we, we use it, that, um, you know, you go in and you, and it smells really fresh and like, whoa, this is not really smelling good in here. But mm -hmm. we have found that, again, these all fit into that category of in, uh, endocrine disruptors. 
along with something that I think we're we're probably disconnected from because we just can't imagine that people would do such a thing, but the uh, vaccinations. Oh yeah, no, I my I homeschool my daughter. She's she's school age, and mm. it's for that specific reason. It's like I'm okay with everything else. You know, I'm sort of super protective mom, so I think you know the school is gonna come under attack, or I don't let her ride the bus because this, that, and the other. But I can kind of cope with that stuff because I, I think I'm just overreacting. But the vaccines, I haven't been able to. I can't imagine if something happened to one of them, you know, with me being so strong about that and I, and I just give in and then something happens. I don't think I can live with myself with that. So I I decided specifically to homeschool. Oh, we've got it. So, yeah, I was on YouTube and I came across this and it just interesting some great points you are setting it up too fast <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there we're okay. getting there okay give me one minute Let one me minute here. i've got to stop the other audio from running let's see and that's why i'm looking here but yeah it's um i do recognize that guy too. <laughs> and uh we're gonna go in here and pause this boom and go back there Of course, it wouldn't work now. It's not supposed to. But uh, this is actually a, a video. It's funny. It's got so many views. But um, this is a video that uh, I I don't agree with everything that this guy is saying. Really? Now, this that most of it I do, but there's some parts where I'm like, you know what? Okay. See, that makes this even more interesting. Yeah. So let's see what this guy was saying back then. We're gonna go ahead. And load this up and uh, I probably should have hit the play button beforehand nope it looks like not gonna go this is not gonna happen yeah I'm sorry I want it to happen but it's not gonna happen I don't know why I don't know why it's not showing up over there but I could I could I mean I, I kind of want everybody to see the, the dude because uh, no, we yeah. can bring that back. We'll yeah. keep that in the queue for yeah. the, this is my no show queue. Yeah. <laughs> so we have. Hmm. I don't know what it is that. Um, but anyway, yeah, he has. He definitely has something to say about chicken. Okay, so we'll we'll come we'll come back to that. Yeah. But um, I actually I'm I'm prepared today. I have a lot of things to talk about. Okay, what else? You got? Um, I have been doing some research once again because I feel like. That's the point I was going to make because, you know, you were talking about the scented air fresheners and, and the things that we do. The most interesting thing is we have a replacement for that most in most cases in our community. Yes. So in terms of like hair products, because, you know, when I sit here, like, again, I'm kind of new to the whole, you know, being awake, being conscious, being aware that the system is trying to <laughs> kill us, you know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of new to that. And so, you know, I still, you know, I wear my hair in a certain way and you know, da, I use these products, but um, we have resources in our community for that, you mm -hmm. know, and that's the most interesting part because if we just come down here to the solstice on the first Saturday and, you know, we do that, then we can have it more often so that you have opportunities to buy each week um, or even every day, you know, maybe we can buy them all and, and do a whole mall. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, we have products and things that are handmade, made with love. I think that ingredient will probably change a lot of things, especially, you know, when you cook, you know, that you, when your grandma cooks, it, it tastes a certain way, but maybe you got a certain aunt who don't you know put enough elbow into it or whatever right. <laughs> but um we we have answers you know we just got to take advantage of, of of that yeah yeah well it, the solstice the bazaar that happens here every first saturday of the month mm -hmm. let's see whether i can give you all that image you know we really need an anybody out there want to be an engineer <laughs> We could use an engineer by right now. Yeah, you can check it out too if you on, if you are on Facebook. We have um, they have images on there as well. It's the S O U L this bazaar. I believe that's the hashtag, and it's just again another event that you can bring your entire family out to. They have different vendors each week, which is a cool thing because you can get a variety of great um, handmade crafts. Um, they have candles and things. Now, those candles do they fall into that category? That you uh, were speaking no, about? If they're, if they're natural, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't fall into that category. Okay. 
But if they're not natural, then yeah, it would be it would be an issue. So yeah, that's the E Life Solstice shopping bazaar. Everything from toilet paper, a black owned toilet paper company, yeah. which is called Freedom Paper, I believe it's yeah. called. Just everything that you can ma you can imagine we have in our community. And so if we can just recognize this, trust it, you know, or t you can test it. I'm not saying, you know, we say you bank black. We're not saying take all your money out wherever you are and put it in a black bank. Put a couple hundred dollars in there and see how it does. You know, yeah. allow yourself to grow in that trust. We're not trying to convince anyone to do anything that they may consider crazy. And so, you know, just test it. You don't have to go and buy the whole body butter line, beer beer butter and sprays and lotions. Try one. See if you like it. Yeah. You know, just come out and try it. You know, mm -hmm. that's the only way that you can know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are a variety. I've come across several um, companies that make handmade um, body butters and cream. Some are specifically vegan. Um, most of them are organic and natural and so you have a variety just like we do in just the regular marketplace in the mall mm -hmm. so there's no reason we can't do that for ourselves yeah and and I remind us all that you know many times we look at it and we say well you know the packaging isn't the same it doesn't look like it's the same quality it doesn't all these negatives that we put out there for these young startups right. that are trying to get their footing and believe it or not, it's your support for them that's going to get all of those issues resolved. Exactly. So you, you do business with them and their packaging will get better. Make the suggestion that's or even, right. you know, go a step further. Find a place that can do the packaging for them or that can provide the packaging and, you know, maybe come in and do some volunteer or help that individual invest in their business and help them be successful at uh, upgrading their image. And you'd be surprised the impact that it's going to make. But to negatively talk and to talk down and to, you know, to hate on that which is ours is not going to move us forward That's in no right. way, shape, or form. It's not going to move us forward. So we're about projecting that positive energy, upbeat, excited. We're motivated. It's 2017. We're ready to make a difference. We're ready for things to uh, get better. And we realize that in order for things to get better, it's going to it's going to be us. We're the ones that are going to make it better for us. Nobody else benefits from it getting better uh, for us but us. That's right. So let's just roll up our sleeves, organize, come together, support one another, build communities, build coalitions, and let's make it better. Right. Meet us down here tonight. The health, wealth, and knowledge of self. Look, I have to give you. <laughs> I always just start talking about health, wealth, and knowledge of self workshop series. We're going to be down here tonight. I'm bringing my whole family. Um, we're going to be down here right after 6, going to have a bite to eat. And at 7 o'clock, the presentation is going to start. So not only will we be getting some useful and resourceful information, we'll have an opportunity to network business-wise, uh, personal-wise. The kids are going to be running around, I'm sure. So it's going to be a great time. We hope that you can join us. But if not, this week we'll be here next week and the week after that and the week after that so we hope that you can join us at one point um, the next thing I want to do I want to introduce a new segment that we're going to be adding to the show um, we have to finalize the name I think we were tossing a few around but for now we'll call it ask dr. Baruch there we go Plain and simple. Today, I wanted to bring up the topic of castor oil. And this is another thing. It's like we have all of these remedies, but it's like we're turned the opposite way. Like, oh, it doesn't this work? And like, someone physically turns you around and pushes you in the opposite direction. It just is crazy to me. And um, castor oil is one of those things because I just came across it on YouTube and just looking for different natural, you know, uh, uh, replacements because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to replace everything that's in my, you know, my, um, my beauty pantry I'll call it with natural things and so this came up um, for several reasons there are actually 14 reasons on this list so maybe we can go through a couple and just kind of get your feedback um, sure unless you do if you have a general um, information well, about castor oil castor oil believe it or not is toxic but that's not a bad thing okay it's toxic so when you consume it your body evacuates it's mm. like the alarm goes off and it's time for us to sit down and let it all go. Okay. And that's the purpose. You know, you see dogs eat grass right. and they're eating the grass so that they can they can get something out of their system. Mm -hmm. And when you have a, to uh, a toxin, when you have a virin, when you have bacteria, when you have microbia that is inside of your body, that is inside of your GI tract in particular, that is causing you issue, it might be a fever, it might be that, uh, you know, Things are just not working as they're supposed to be working inside of your body as a result of this 
this presence. Mm -hmm. So you're able to clean out your system. Also, you know, castor oil, when I was young, you took castor oil just on a regular basis just mm -hmm. to keep your system clean. So you didn't get clogged. You didn't get backed up. You didn't allow toxins to lodge or anything to lodge in your system. And we were regular mm -hmm. and we didn't get sick. We didn't miss school. So right. all these things happened as a result of us uh, taking this castor oil. That was before all of this new stuff that came out. It was Uncle Castor. You, know, you came on down. <laughs> Uncle, Castor. Uncle Castor. I like that. I yeah. like that. And we would take that castor oil. And I believe it or not, I used to like it. Mm. That's crazy. I used to like <laughs> castor oil yeah, until I, I saw somebody that. throw up and oh. like one of those projectile throw ups. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's nasty. Right. Oh, that's okay. so funny. So that left a mark on me, but um, I am I'm seeing again the the benefit. I'm seeing us getting back to it. You don't find it that much in the grocery stores. It used to be in every grocery store. No, I seem like you wouldn't. It seems like it helps a lot of things. So if they put that in there, then that means the other ten shelves of stuff that we don't need um, would would be um, would be removed. Yeah. yeah and okay. um, yeah. They'd rather put it in some fancy schmancy bottle call it some fancy name and add some flavoring to it so that then you know they can make a ton of money off of you that's right so it that's actually number one on the list the fact that it's a laxative so would that be and this may be too much of a question to ask because i know it depends you know you deal with medical things but um if you um would need a colonic or something is this something that can kind of assist with you because i did some research on that once again but it's just internet and of course when you go and you try to self-diagnose then you get the, the best and the worst of everything and uh, uh there were good things about the colonic but then the overall that i I got from it was that it wasn't a good idea because of something but I would say colonics would not be the best idea if we ate the healthiest diet on the planet and we were we were you know consistently regular mm -hmm. and the environment wasn't full of toxins and you know people weren't dropping chemicals from airplanes to supposedly forestall greenhouse the greenhouse effect mm -hmm. if all of that wasn't going on then I would say yeah you know you probably don't want to run something up inside of you water or otherwise you don't want to run that and and kind of send your system in reverse right however because we are so overwhelmingly toxic and it, it took me going to a colon therapist to see what came out of somebody's body mm -hmm. and I said oh my mind has just changed <laughs> you needed colon hydrotherapy you needed a colonic to get that out of you if that wasn't going to come out of you any other way and it didn't look like it was one of those things that would just routinely come out of a human being's body right. then yeah we all need to go get colonics so that we can get those toxins out of our body so that we can now you know normalize and now uh, increase the absorption of nutrient in our small intestines and help and support the processing of this waste through our large intestines so mm. yeah i i'm definitely on board with it now whereas before i, I was vehemently against it I was like, oh, <laughs> right no. it doesn't it doesn't sound too um, exciting look i'm yeah. excited about everything it says it's not exciting um so castle oil would not be a replacement for that it does something different castor oil does a similar but uh, they, they, they have different pluses and minuses. So the castor oil is coming from the top down, which is good. So mm -hmm. it's pushing everything. If you do castor oil with like um, a, a nice fiber, like uh, psyllium husk. Mm -hmm. So if you do the castor oil and psyllium husk, you're really going to get a good mix because that fiber is going to grab everything and pull it down and get it out of your system. Mm -hmm. The castor oil is just going to now get in your system. Your body's going to say, beep, 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 toxin. Let's push it out because we need to get it out of our system because this is bad. So, you know, we do that. And, and don't overdo it with the castor oil because you don't want to be gripe. You don't want to find yourself griping and you don't want to find your stomach hurting and feeling like you're about to give birth to a baby. And I've been there. <laughs> you know, there's some other good ones, too. Cascara Sagrada and Senna Leaf are also good. And those you have to be careful as well mm -hmm. with how much you put in your system because it will cause your muscles to contract and it will wear you out. Right. You will you will be worn out. Wow, um, wow. Okay. What else you got on it? Yeah, I was going to say muscle is right. Number two, relieves muscle soreness. And then three would be uh, soothes joint pain. Mm -hmm. Because it's removing those toxins. So you're removing the toxins. You're removing the acidity. Most of us are too acidic. So it's removing all that acidic waste, which is going to help relieve the um, inflammation throughout the body, which is going to help relieve, you know, the... Um, 
the acid that is associated with working out or doing some strenuous exercise or activity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're going to get uh, you're going to get relief from all of that as you remove those toxins, and now the body's able to go out and get the toxins out of the system rather than. To oh, so that's internally you're saying? Because mm -hmm. I've seen some articles where they were recommending it as an like an external yeah. massage oil as well. And you actually can rub castor oil on the outside of your body and still detox. With really? It. Yeah, because ah, your body is, your skin is a digestive organ. So gotcha. it digests. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, treats fungal infections. Yeah, it, in that it's antiviral, antifungal. Yes, it, it will treat and it will kill. Right. And uh, many of our oils fit into that category. And I it's uh you know there's some that are more aggressive mm -hmm. and you might be familiar with tea tree oil you might be familiar with oil of oregano those are more specific don't use those in the same quantity that you do castor oil you're gonna have an issue okay but uh yeah th those oils are found to be and proven to be uh antiviral and antifungal nice nice and that again like i okay i already said that um promotes hair growth this one i'm extremely um interested in just hearing about because this is something that we deal with a lot in our community. And of course, there are a million products on the market. You can sign up and have products sent to your house every month, but nothing really works. So it makes me think it's just another marketing strategy to get people to spend more money. And um, I've never really heard castor oil in any of this natural hair movement or this, you know, thing that we're doing right now. So um, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I've heard that. And castor oil has been used for quite some time in, in hair and in hair products. Okay. Uh, there's actually... But not as the front runner, right? Um, I believe now they've got a... And you can look it up. I think it's, it's maybe it's Jamaican. I can't remember. But I, I don't know whether it's castor oil. But it's one of those products. And, and uh, again, it's an oil that you might use other ways, and now they're realizing that, oh, I can use it on my hair, and it benefits me, mm. and it benefits my scalp, and it helps to promote hair growth, and it helps to promote healthy hair, you know. And it's like taking a vitamin C capsule. You take a vitamin C tablet or capsule, and you get one result, but then you start noticing, wow, this is getting better, and that's getting better, and I'm not feeling this way, and I don't see this like I used to see. And, you know, so things, things improve across the board because what you're doing is you're elevating you know, systemically, you're elevating levels inside of your body. So when you put it on top of your scalp, mm -hmm. it's your, it enters in your body systemically. So that castor oil will go throughout the body, but it also is there resident on the scalp and will help support growth of hair and uh, nice, soft and, and um, you know, healthy hair. Right. Well, and that's so important. So I'm definitely going to research more. Um, enhances hair color. And these are all kind of the beauty section, um, homemade natural mascara for those of us who wear mascara. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know it's used in mascara and, and uh, products that uh, we use in makeup for makeup. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as um, the, the skin across the board, I just think it's a, it's a good oil. It's a good product. Mm -hmm. So wherever you put it on topically, you're going to get results. You talked earlier about the muscle aches. Mm -hmm. Sure, you put it on your muscles that are aching, and it's going to help disperse those toxins because it, the whether you drink it or whether you put it on the outside of the body, when you put it in large quantities, the body has to then take it in and get rid of it. Uh -huh. So it's going to take it in and pull all that is along with it and, and drag that through your system and push it out you know, through your colon tract. Right, okay, so that makes sense. So then they're listing like spot treatments for skin problems. It has that same type of property where it's, it's going in and coming out. Natural sleep aid, that's a little bit different. Sleep aid, wow, I haven't heard that one before. I wonder how you use that. I help you fall asleep without much delay, put you in a deep slumber. Da -da. You put it like on your temples or where you Dab a bit of castor oil on your eyelids. Eyelids, okay. And uh, if you're setting a long, <laughs> yeah, basically put it on your eyelids. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll have to research that one a little bit more. That uh, probably makes sense. It's probably all oils will probably do that, or many oils. Some you don't don't put oil of oregano on your eyelids. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you, there are oils that uh, I'm sure will help relax the muscles in your eyes so that your eyes will close and you'll go to sleep and you'll be at peace and mm -hmm. you'll wake up in the morning and your eyes will be still. Of course, the castor oil will still be there, so maybe your eyes won't be as heavy, your eyelids won't be as heavy. Right. And uh, yeah, I see that. Right. Uh, treating babies with colic? Treating babies with colic. 
Okay. Applied externally on the ab abdominal area. Mm, okay, helps to reduce inflammation and helps keep things moving. Yeah. So you got to get those those toxins moving through your system. Got to get that that waste moving through your system. Sure, I see it. Um, skin ailments on pets. So I guess that's similar. To yeah. Mm -hmm. um, antiviral, antifungal. Yeah. As a preservative, and I guess that's back to the antifungal property. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, that's probably why it's in makeup and other natural natural products, natural hair care products. Right. Mm -hmm. um, as a lubricant okay. um, for moving parts and machines. Yeah, definitely. You know, and that's probably where it was used first. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. Maybe not. Because I, I, I can imagine the indigenous used it for years before somebody from Germany came up with a machine that needed new lubrication that you right. would use that for. Right, right. Yeah. And the biggest one, it helps induce labor. Oh, okay. Now I know there's a there's a formula that women would take and who are going through natural childbirth. Mm -hmm. There's a formula that women would take, and I think I do remember it being castor oil. Mm -hmm. I think you do like a good quantity, like a really like maybe even a half a cup of castor oil right. will help support one because it's going to help you get rid of all that waste. So you get rid of that waste, and now the baby has more room to push and move down and, ah. and get into position to get out. Right. But also, you know, again, relaxes in that it has that relaxing and that uh, anti-inflammatory capacity. Well, here's the thing. Now, nowadays, all doctors advised against it. And I love this site. I, um, I have to share it with you guys. Um, but right after they write this, it says, this goes to prove that castor oil can Works. indeed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I said, I love this site. I saved yeah. it. I started looking them up and stuff. But um, yeah. thank you so much for that information. I know I'm going to take um, the notes. You know, I always go back and I, I take notes of everything that we've done. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you guys have questions, if you want to ask Dr. Baruch something, please send them in. We'll be happy to feature them either here on our show or during our Wednesday night. Um, if you're, again, not doing anything tonight, come out and hang out with us. 7 p.m. the presentation will start and it will be followed by a great networking and chatting and just having a great time. Yeah, that's it. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m. at Everlasting Life, 9185 Central Avenue in Capitol Heights, Maryland. We're going to have a Health, Wealth, and Knowledge of Self workshop series. That's right. Well, I think I've talked more than I've talked in a long time. I think we did good. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I think we did. Like I said, we're going to get two guests scheduled for next Tuesday. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with us. Um, we're going to be here next week again, Tuesday at 11 a.m. with another, well, not, another wonderful guest, or maybe three. We'll see. But until then, this has been the E Life Power Lunch with Dr. Baruch and Chris Murray. See you next time. And we won't stop until we get it. Come on down. If you win it, wake up, let's go, we're on a mission Recognize we've got that power And we make sure that you know it Got that pride, go ahead and show it Stand up, fight back, no time for hoping Recognize we got that power and we won't stop until we get it Come on down, if you win it Wake up, let's go, we're on a mission Recognize we've got that power And we make sure that you know it Got that pride, go ahead and show it Stand up, fight back, no time for hoping Recognize we got that power